Melody Paul was born in Sydney, Nova Scotia, to Mi'kmaq parent, growing up in Eskasoni Native Reservation. Melody moved to Maine in 1998 and has spent most of her adult life in the Bangalore area. She has one minor son named Anthony, who she enjoys spending most of her weekends. Melody struggled with addiction and wrote about it during her incarceration in Maine prison system. Utilizing her time, she was able to overcome most of her substance abuse issue by healing her inner child with acceptance. Today, she lived in Bangalore and works full-time. Recovering has become a mission in life, volunteering her time at the Bangalore Area Recovery Network for a year she was able to give back to her community and learn more about herself. She is active and accountable in a recovery community. Melody facilitates a weekly web reading meeting and talks day with her partner, Charlie, at the band in Bury, Maine. Becoming a recovery coach has helped her guide her fellow peers to overcome the obstacles of addiction. And on today's episode, we're having also Melody Paul Rose on the show. Welcome on the show, Melody. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you featured on English Literature. You know, Melody, tell us about your new book, Walking the Recovery Road. How does the book come about? I mean, what inspired the book? So what inspired the book, Walking the Recovery Road, mm -hmm. is... Um, when I first got clean and sober um, in 2012, I had a hard time to understand the process of like the recovery process. I had a hard time like opening up. I had a hard time like, you know, people suggested things and I just didn't, I didn't accept a lot of things because I, I guess I wasn't ready, you know, and um, I just, I just kind of uh, was lost and, um, you know, I, so I decided to write some that would help uh, the newcomer and uh, the person that's new to the 12 step program um, to help under give them a little bit of understanding of what to expect um, when you're new in recovery and how I did my step work. And what happened with me, you know, how I got past some situations that were difficult. I had, you know, good things happening. Um, I had bad things happening, had losses. Um, but I got past all that because I was in recovery and I, and I ended up didn't go back to drinking or drugging because I, I have a program that I use so that I can and a community that I use so that that that's like my safety net so I don't go back out and destroy myself <laughs> mm, yeah and from from actually reading through your bio I found it quite intriguing and uh, it's it's quite captivating to wanting a reader or a first time person discovering it to want to get a copy of the book because when I actually read it it's it's very compelling and I was like oh this is sound like something I would love to read now for readers like me who haven't read the book yet without giving much information away could you have a sneak of what we would expect picking up the book um do you want me to read some of it sure you can go ahead or... and read. that'll be fine I made a choice to leave the substances alone but only for a few days until I started to get the f to feel the side effects of the drugs leaving my body I thought that I would be able to move on and just start making changes. But really, I was only fooling myself. I was isolated from the community at this point. I had no real friends. I didn't even have the support of my family because they didn't know what I was doing. What I was really doing was getting high on a daily basis and not allowing anyone to see what I was doing. It was obvious to see. If you really knew me back then, I wore long sleeve shirts to hide my arms. I rarely ate any food. I was pale looking and I couldn't look anyone in the eye. 
basically I was a walking zombie, a person that wanted to only get get the drink or drugs so that I could continue to live in a denial state and zone out. My life was a mess. I had nobody that I could reach out to. I was in a state of mind that was just sick and I wanted to die at times. I was afraid to ask for help. I was afraid to go to public places, fear of being judged or hated. I had just felt this tremendous load of guilt from what happened to Charlie's sister. When the guilt and shame would come creeping in, this is when my inner monster would come out to haunt me, haunting my thoughts, haunting my soul, haunting my spirit, especially. After a few weeks of using drugs daily to numb out, to numb out any feelings I was having, I was in a depressed state. Charlie was more depressed than I had ever seen him before. I feel horrible inside for how I let my life get so insane. I was still working, but only part time. I wasn't making enough money to pay the bills and Charlie was using all his money for drugs. The rent was way past due and we just let all the bills go. We had, we had talked about the possibility of the drug enforcement agency getting a hold of us to press charges for the overdose of his sister. The chance that we would, the chance that we would be sent away be, became real. I never imagined myself being locked away for a long time. I hadn't, I had, I hadn't even done time before. The only type of isolation from public that I ever did was rehab. That was back in 2012 when I had to do a court ordered treatment, treatment rehab in order to get my son back from the state. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. I'm following and I'm nodding my head as I keep reciting. That's a lot to digest. Now, I also want to ask you, Melody, I'm curious to know, because I know writing memoir can be very difficult, can be a very difficult task to do. And as such, I'm curious to know if you experienced any challenges while writing your book. If there is any, could you share with us what challenge it was and how you ultimately overcame it? Um, I guess the only challenges I had was time. Okay. Because I, I wake up early in the morning and that's when I write. Um, so one of my challenges was just finding the time to write, you know, cause I had a full-time job. I have a 16 year old, a relationship and all this other stuff in life that I was trying to do. And I guess that was the only thing is just finding the time mm -hmm. sitting down, you know, you know, as a writer, Absolutely. you have to have full con full concentration and like mm -hmm. you got to have a quiet space and get in that zone of like writing the ideas out. And, um, but honestly, this, this book helped me this time. The second book helped me because it was during COVID and it was isolation time. And I was able to have a lot of time to write. And I had a few friends pass away me being able to write a little better in my core, like my core in here. That's great. That's very fascinating. Now, could you tell us a bit about your memoir, Savage to Wellness? We'd love to hear about that too. So Savage to Wellness. Just right here. Oh, beautiful cover. Beautiful cover. So I wrote this in 2017, oh, wow. when I was in, incarcerated in Wyndham, Maine, um, and I was just having a hard time, you know, like, I grew up speaking Micmac, and like, there's sometimes times when I have a hard time communicating, like, certain things, mm -hmm. so I was just had so much, like, thoughts in my mind, and I was like, how can I like, how can I explain this? And like, how could I say this story of like misunderstanding my, like my life? Like, maybe I'll write it down. Maybe I'll write it so people understand what happened and what, what led me to 
start drinking and having the life I had for such a long time until today, like until, until I finished writing that. Hmm. So writing it out for me, I was able to, it's almost like I was writing a letter to somebody. I was writing a letter. I was writing a letter to the audience and to the people of my community and people that know me to explain to them, like, because they didn't understand. They were like, well, what happened? You know, why is she, what made her do that? You know, well, a lot of things made me do it. I got depressed. I was angry. I was fighting the court system. I was just getting, um, I didn't realize I was in an abusive relationship, controlled an abusive relationship for a long time. And I didn't, I didn't realize it, wow. how controlled and it was until I was incarcerated mm-hmm. and just leaving that relationship was a, like a, a big, big deal for me. And then I just kind of like my life shifted a little bit and I just kind of ran loose after I left that relationship and I started partying a little bit too much and I got out of control and I got depressed and, and, um, I got arrested. That's a lot. And I see that your book would be a very good resource for people who are passing through this kind of issue with addiction, with in a lot of things that you've mentioned. I think it would really help them. And people on this category, or even people that are not into it, if they get to read it, they get to understand the subject matter very well and be able to help themselves alongside. So I would love to say thank you for writing such an impressive book because it's like a resource that would help people out there who are facing similar challenges. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate you saying that because um, the second book here, The Walk in the Recovery Road, is a self-help book. Oh, wow. That is a self-help book. So I'm hoping that, like, all the people that are out there that are having difficulties, and I, I actually, I just had somebody read it recently, like last week, tell me that they read just three pages and they were crying because they could relate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. It, it, it is a lot. I love when I get feedback like that. It's because mm. it's true. It's honest. A lot of people, mm. a lot of people don't want to talk about addiction. Absolutely. And, but we had a crisis here, you know, the, the, the opioid crisis, you know, and I see like homeless people and like, people on the street, but guess what? That was me. That was me. Um, I was sleeping outside with nowhere to go. I had, I was drinking outside with, I, I had maybe like a, a small bag of like two outfits of clothes with the small backpack with, I didn't even have money. <laughs> oh, wow. And like, I was able to change my life around because I choose to stop drinking, stop using drugs. And I just, I listened to people in recovery and I was like, I want to desperately change. I don't want to be homeless. I want to have, I want to have the things that other people have. I want to change my life. And so I just started, I started to go to meetings. I met friends. Um, I did, I did some local meetings in our area and I did 90 meetings in 90 days. Um, And then I found, I discovered that um, helping and helping and doing community service really helped me a lot to giving back to the community and like doing volunteer work helped me in my recovery process. And that's some of what I write too, of like what to do you know, help others. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. You know, when I actually saw the book, I I seem to consider it a very good resource for people in this category. And now I would love to move to my next question. Could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? What are the challenges that you've encountered in terms of 
marketing your books and what are the mediums you really like so far to promote it? Well, I know it's actually a new book that is currently out. So I don't know if you'd love to talk a little bit about that. So I self self publish both of these books. Okay. So that's a whole different path too. So it's kind of hard. So I've been able to do my homework, go on YouTube, reach out to other authors that are backed up by big co- publishing companies and ask for their feedback and I've been able to do my homework and I've successfully like made out a plan on h- how I'm going to strategize my market marketing my um my tour <laughs> my yeah. book tour you know I have a target audience that I've been focusing on that that's who um I don't know it's just a lot of homework Mm. Um it's a lot of work. Absolutely. Um it's not giving up. Um believing well, in your writing and and doing anything and everything to get it out there. Yeah. You know it's like a journey. And thanks for adding that to you. I'm excited to hear about that. As a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? What would you tell people in this category? Um I would just say that like if they're writing a book, like just keep writing it. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged and put the paper back in the drawer. Just mm. keep keep picking away at it. it. Might take a year. Might take two years, but it's something that if you th- if you believe in, you can make it a reality. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for adding that. And I was also going to ask you, where can viewers get a copy of your book? For people who love to get a copy. Where can they purchase a copy of the book? Well, I have it on my website where I have two different publishers. Well, actually, you could have you can order it on Amazon. And I've left a link in the description part of this interview for viewers who would love to get a copy of Melody Rose's book directly on Amazon and also a link to our website. So thank you so much, Melody Rose, for accepting the invitation to be featured on Pinglish Literature. It's a pleasure diving into your works and having the body of your works discussed here today. Thank you, Peter. It was very nice talking with you and thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure.